beloved black people welcome back to the plight and struggle of black people in america you know normally <clears throat> we do the prominent black people series on sundays but today we're just going to improvise and <clears throat> see where this conversation takes us okay let's try that uh for one thing <clears throat> uh today is uh mother's day uh actually Today uh, is the second anniversary of my mother's passing, okay? So that's an interesting thing. And I've seen so many people talk about so many things as it pertains to having your mother, losing your mother, not having your mother, and on and on. But for me, I just think about, okay, all the great times that I had with my mother, and wow, there were many. Uh, she passed at 86 years of age. <clears throat> I'm, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm 62. And if I can get a deal today for 72, I take it. <laughs> so I think she was very blessed to make it to 86. But besides that, you know, I was wondering, what do I want to do? Well, I thought about like when we were growing up in North Philadelphia, a lot of times uh, on Mother's Day, people would go to the movie theaters. And there will there usually will be always a special movie out. Now I don't know of a movie that's out right now, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as brand new, but a movie that I definitely like to talk about uh, is The Harder They Fall. And the reason is, this is what's happening. <clears throat> the world is evolving. And the great thing is black people are evolving as well, right along with the world, you feel me? So anyway, uh, this movie, uh, The Harder They Fall, what it is, for those that haven't seen it, don't even know what it is, it's a, a Black Western, okay? It's a Black Western that was created <clears throat> by a brother uh, from the UK. As a matter of fact, if you know the uh, singer from the UK named Seal, who used to be married to the uh, model uh, Heidi Klum. Uh, it's his brother that put this movie together. And wow, okay, what, what the movie is about is uh, two black rivals pretty much. But what's interesting about the movie as far as the characters and then when you read the credits, they have various names of actual historical black people. Okay, like there's one character, a female, uh, Mary Fields. And she was a real person. Uh, what's interesting to me, because, you know, I usually know about our people as far as, you know, the reputation, color, character, features, stuff like that. Uh, like in the movie, uh, Mary Fields definitely looks nothing like the Mary Fields in real life. Okay, but me personally, I don't have no problem with that because I have seen when Black people have went through the situation of thinking that somebody is more or less black than another person based on the complexion of their skin. And that's totally ridiculous. Come on now, totally ridiculous. Let me give you this one example of that right quick, okay? Uh, Clarence Thomas, he's uh, the second black person ever to be on the United States Supreme Court. And I don't know, that brother might be darker than me. But wow, because of his stances and the things he have went against that would help a black person that lets you know he has no love in his heart for black people, no matter how dark his skin may be. And that's unfortunate, but it's real. Uh, and on that same level, I'm sorry, that same level, we have a brother, uh, uh, Thurgood Marshall, which he was quite bright in complexion, but that brother showed that even before he got into the U.S. Supreme Court, that he fight for black people, he loved black people, and he's trying to do everything he can do to help black people. <laughs> and that leaves my mind somewhere else on a piece I did not very long ago. Uh, it was the fact that all three of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court, court uh, 
candidates and appointees and conf confirmed people, which is three to this day, uh, because of uh, Katanji Brown Jackson being the third, she's confirmed, but somebody has to step out before she steps in, something like that. But it's interesting that uh, all three of these uh, black people that made it to the U.S. Supreme Court, neither one of them had a black spouse, so that's that's kind of interesting. But anyway, back to the movie of uh, the Heart of the Fall. Uh, there was a character, uh, Mary Fields, like I say, and in real life, she did drive a stagecoach. She was the first, mm, might be black person, but definitely the first black woman to ever drive a stagecoach delivering a postal mail, mail for the postal service, you know, back when that's the way they delivered it. And wow, her story is interesting. One thing about when you hear about various people, please research these people because these people have some interesting stories and history and background that shows you many things. And one thing a lot of it shows is what black people are made of. And we're so resilient. We're so capable. We're so able, you know, we're all that. Okay, in this movie, Harder They Fall, another uh, character that was in there was a brother named Bass Reeves. Okay, now, all these are real people in real life, but what happened was they used these characters in the movie for the fictitious part of it, but they used the names of real black people in history in this country. Now, this brother, Bass Reeves, he was a U.S. Marshal, in real life I'm talking about, uh, for the Southwest region, I think it was. I have a documentary on that too, if anybody would like to have it. Uh, and this is the talk. I mean, this brother did all sorts of things as far as catching criminals, that type of thing. One time, this fella, he even tracked his son down for something that happened and, and put him in, in jail. So he was definitely dedicated and all that. But what I'm getting to about this brother, Bass Reeves, what the talk is, most people have heard of this series called The Lone Ranger, right? He had the little Indian partner, uh, Tonto. Well, the talk is that that Lone Ranger fella, those stories are based on the real black man, Bass Reeves. Real stories and real history, see? So, man, knowledge is so lovely. <laughs> when you're black and know your black history, knowledge is, ooh, it feels real, real good. So, anyway, there are some other people in the movie, with, with, in that movie, with uh, historical characteristic names and that type of thing. But rather than to go into all of them, uh, I like to talk a little bit about some of the things about the movie off screen and on screen. Okay. Now, off screen, now this is what's real interesting to me. Now, this fella, Jay Z, uh, if you look on my uh, YouTube, uh, The Play and Struggle of Black People in America, you can check out the one where I uh, talked about uh, Stop Using the N-Word, 2007, right? Well, see, this guy, Jay-Z, obviously, if you know anything about him and his business, he's a rapper turned entrepreneur and does many things in businesses. But what I'm getting at is I had had some moments of checking this brother out, and I'm wondering why this brother insists on using the N-Word. Now, I know that rap genre that's uh, prevalent in that business. I know that. But one thing that's interesting about this movie now, when it comes to Jay-Z in this movie, I'm not exactly sure his full role, but I think he was probably a person that invested big money in. That's my guess. Okay. But he definitely was involved. Anyway, for one thing, uh, this movie, the N-word wasn't used not one time the entire movie. But not only that, in the early part of the movie, there was a scene where uh, they stopped the train and they were getting ready to uh, be confronted by the conductor. And it looked like he was getting ready to say the N-word. Then the lady said, you know, Westerns are going to be pretty violent. That's just the nature of Westerns, especially uh, Westerns here in this country. And he said something like, like it was an end beginning sound or something. <clears throat> and then she shot him. And the other brother was like, well, Maybe he was going to say nincompoop. <laughs> she said, well, we ain't nincompoops either. She has a New Orleans accent. I love that for sure. And so the point I'm making on talking about that is that they obviously made it a point to say, we ain't doing the N-word. And that's out. You see what I'm saying? Not just in the movie. Now, in the movie, that was literal because the N-word never happened. And I told you what happened. But I'm thinking, see, a lot of times these movies are done to have impact outside of that theater. 
You see, because for me to see, and I'll be watching black folks, I ain't kidding. For me to see that Jay-Z not only once used that word, he even defending it, he's involved in a project that I know it wasn't accidental that they didn't use the N-word the entire movie. Now, you know good and well that was on purpose. Which says to me, not only is the world evolving, black people are evolving too. You feel me? Anyway, now back to the scenes where this movie did have some Caucasian participants, okay? And that scene at the uh, train was one, the first one. And then there was another one later on. I can't think of it, but I'll get to it, I'm sure, because I'm going to talk about the first scene. Now, the first scene on the train, uh, they went on there to, to get a uh, prisoner that had been granted immunity from the governor or president, whichever one it was. And what's interesting to me, uh, every time in this movie when these brothers uh, had an encounter with Caucasians, <laughs> it was interesting, entertaining. And all that. Uh, this was a black people movie. And the Caucasians, when they showed up on scenes, they got done in, uh, they got handled. You know, and you know, it's a movie, so you know, I loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then the other part in dealing with Caucasians, it was in a, a bank scene. And it was just nice to see how these black people handled these Caucasians in every aspect of this movie. I mean, handle them. You feel me? <laughs> but this movie is entertainment. So sometimes things that's in entertainment is either a reflection of, a part of, or going to be come something of reality. And, and I'm certain of it. This is the thing. Black people are finally waking up and realizing that, hey, America don't love us. Not only America doesn't love us, America has never loved us. And some people kind of still having trouble with uh, wanting to talk about our struggle without offending anyone. I mean, why would you worry about offending people if you're telling the truth? Okay, so black people, we got to just get to the point to where we're going to tell our truth, we're going to speak our truth, and we're going to handle our business, however we have to do it. And, and I'm going to tell you one thing that's significant and very important is that we Black people definitely need to stop lying to our children about everything. Christmas, Thanksgiving, anything you think, Easter, Halloween, come on, let's keep it real with our own babies. We're going to keep lying to our babies like we were lied to? Look where we are because of those lies that we embraced. So anyway, I know we ain't going to keep lying to our babies. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the movie, The Heart of They Fall, check it out. And I'm wondering, how would you feel about the movie before and after? I mean, before you watch it and after you watch it, did it have any type of significant effect on your thought process as to the fact that, yes, Black people are evolving? We're waking up. We it was one lady named uh Fanny Lay. I'm sorry, Fanny May uh <laughs> Hamer, that's her name, out of Mississippi. And she used to say she's sick and tired of being sick and tired. I mean, we all ought to be that. We all should have been that decades ago. So we're gonna get better and better. We're learning constantly, uh, and we need to unite and show each other love publicly, purposely. And, and preach and, and practice that. Black on black love. It's supposed to be. It's without a doubt. We're supposed to love each other. I love us. Most of us love us. So let's make it an epidemic. How about that? So uh, it's always nice to talk to black people, especially the black people that I know love black people. You feel me? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs>